Hey, welcome to episode 32 of the Practical EdTech Podcast. I'm your host, Richard Byrne, back after a week off because I was super hoarse and laid out by a nasty little flu bug. And uh, so now we're, I'm almost back to full strength. My voice is a little bit tired, but almost back to full strength. Let's get right into this week's episode of the Practical EdTech Podcast by covering some news and notes from the last week, week and a half in the world of educational technology, technology and education. So first up, Common Craft, my friends Lee and Sasha the Fever, the husband and wife team behind Common Craft, they have a new video out. It's about kind of an older topic. It's the differences between online and local documents. I have to tell you, when I saw this video, I thought, does anyone really need to be convinced of this? And then I had a conversation with one of the teachers in my school, and it turns out, yes, there is still a need for a video that explains the difference between an online and local document. Uh, now, I'm not sure that showing the video convinced that particular person who has... Uh, his heels dug in, but uh, you know it's still still a great video. On the Common Craft note, not a new video, an old video of theirs that I published again on my on my blog uh, last weekend explains the Electoral College. It's 2020. We're electing a new president or re-electing our current president. That's as close to poli- as close to politics as I'm going to get in this podcast. Uh, it's a great topic to revisit with your students, and Common Craft does a really nice job of explaining how the Electoral College works. So check out that video. It's, that's available on their YouTube channel for free. Uh, go to YouTube and look up Common Craft Electoral College. Great explanation of the Electoral College. On the video topic, there's a new stop-motion video editor that I've been playing with a little bit. It's called Cloud Stop Animation. And as the name implies, it's a cloud-based, web-based editor for making stop motion videos. It is really easy to use. Uh, it's, it's free. They have a variety of plans. You can use it free with no login. You can use it free with a login. And then there's a paid plan that gives you more storage space. But the free plan with a login is really quite good. And there's an education version. The free education version lets schools manage their student accounts. So that's really cool. So check that out. Cloudstopmotion.com is the website. And thanks to Danny Nicholson and the Whiteboard blog for sharing that earlier this month. I meant to include it in last week's podcast, but last week my voice was shot, so I didn't record a podcast. Check out cloudstopmotion.com. Great little editor for making stop motion videos. If you are like me, you are probably chronically behind in replying to emails. And the official Google blog, Google's official blog, this week had an interesting little article about email productivity and some email productivity tips. One of them that was new to me, and there was really the only one that was new to me in there, uh, was the suggestion of dragging emails into the tasks menu or the tasks bar in your Gmail. Which I thought, yeah, that's kind of a handy little trick, particularly if there's a, an email that has a, a task or something you need to do to, to follow up on. So, yeah. Check out that article on the official Google blog about email productivity. On Monday of this past week, I hosted a webinar. It was a free webinar titled Three Easy Steps to Encourage Technology Integration. And and I did that webinar for two reasons. One, I wanted to share this framework that I've been using for years for introducing new technology tools to people. I also was trying to test out a new webinar platform called Easy Webinar. Easy Webinar was easy to use. 
I'll give it that. It doesn't have all the features, though, that I like about go to training and go to webinar. So easy webinar, while it's cheaper than go to webinar, didn't have all the features I wanted. So I'm not ready to say yes, it's a perfect replacement for go to webinar. Uh, go to webinar still is top dog in my book. It's also the most expensive one uh, out there at almost $200 a month. Go to webinar is super expensive, but it has every bell and whistle, every feature you could ever use and need and more. Uh, Easy webinar didn't have that. Uh, and so unfortunately, I'm not going to be using go to we Easy webinar going forward. But it was neat to try it out. And thank you to those of you who came to the webinar and were kind of my guinea pigs on how it worked. Ted Ed released a new video this week, uh, or I should say last week, called Do Politics Make Us Irrational? Spoiler alert, yes, they do. Politics does make us irrational. And the video cited a couple of little studies, including a really interesting one uh, from 2013 in which the people tested, I guess, in the, the sampled, uh, were given some math problems and then shown some statements, some pol some political statements. And if the statement agreed with their their own personal views, they tended to do better than those who saw statements that disagreed with them. So that was kind of an inter interesting little video. Check it out uh, on TED Ed. Do politics make us irrational? Yes, they do. But it's interesting why. Uh, Class Dojo has a new feature. It's called Events. And what it is is just a handy little way for teachers to post upcoming events, due dates, uh, you know, for things like permission slips and, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, but also to announce things like classroom parties or field trips, that sort of stuff. And Class Dojo will handle all the reminders for you. So you can set up your event. And then Class Dojo will send all the reminders to parents as needed. Inflation Calculator is a new little website. You know, nothing, there's a zillion of them out there. Uh, I tried out a new one called Inflation Calculator that does just that. Shows you the impact of inflation on the price of goods. Okay. Nothing, nothing really fancy, but you know, handy. Uh, Wakelet. Wakelet is a become a massively popular tool for bookmarking and sharing resources and they have a new Microsoft Edge extension out this week that you can use for you know clipping and saving more things to your wakelet boards a new tool that I've started using this month uh, or I should say not a new tool an updated tool that I started using this month is called Optimize Press 3.0 Optimize Press 3.0. It is a tool for making WordPress pages from scratch. So if you want to design your own WordPress page or your own WordPress blog template, great little tool and cheap. It's not free, but it's cheap. I think I paid $39 for my for, for the version that I'm using. And you can use it on up to five different domains. Check that out if you're uh, if you're a WordPress person and you're looking for to make a custom, truly custom page, truly or a truly custom theme. It's really easy to use. The older version of Word of uh, Optimized Press, the 2.0 version, was kind of clunky. This one is really slick, really really nice. I've been really happy with it. And the last little news and note is this week, or I should say, not this week, the week before. Again back when I was losing my voice, uh, we switched from DirecTV to YouTube TV. And I tweeted about this last night. I finally just tweeted about it, just kind of randomly while I was watching the Celtics game. Uh, and I got tons of commentary about it. All kinds of people were like, wow, yeah, you know, I love YouTube TV. Or other people ask me questions about it. Uh, like, how's it, how are the sports and how's the local TV? The sports and the local TV are awesome on YouTube TV. And just before I started recording this episode, someone suggested to, to me to check out the Smithsonian channel on YouTube TV. Uh, YouTube TV is 50 bucks a month, which is 
less than half the cost of what I was paying for direct TV. And with YouTube TV, we've also gotten rid of our Hulu subscription. So that's great. So saving money and having fun all the way around. All right. Now it's time for thoughts from my classroom. Such that they are. So in the last two weeks, my school has had three snow days. We've had a delayed start. So we've had four days directly impacted by snow. And last week, I had 25% of my students out for various flu, cold, nastiness that's going around. It whacked me down. All that to say, that, and today is the start of our February vacation. Uh, like most traditional northern New England schools, we have a February break and then an April break. Our February break started today with Winter Carnival. So, yeah, basically all momentum has been shot in February. Uh, <laughs> all that to say, I am trying something new with my freshmen. It's uh, a classroom economy or mock economy simulation called paygrade.io. Yes, I'm teaching computer science this year, but I'm using this paygrade.io uh, as a tool for kind of classroom incentives or classroom management i hate to call it classroom management more classroom incentives every kid has a job in my pay grade account and they get paid in a virtual currency for them and at the end of the month now you can set it up to be every week but i'm setting it up for the end of the month at the end of the month kids can cash out and they can spend their currency and they can use that currency towards little prizes that i've set up uh, one of them is a trip to Dunkin' Donuts. So, uh, but some of my kids wanted to cash out already. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, that's that. But it, it's a it's a slick little it's a, it's a slick little tool. Full disclosure, they are advertising on freetechforteachers.com right now. Uh, even if they weren't, I still would be using the tool. It was created by a teacher, uh, and it's really just her and her husband that are that are running it uh, as a kind of a little side project, pet project. So it's kind of a, it's a cool little tool. Check it out, paygrade.io. Again, I think I would be using it even if they didn't approach me to advertise on Free Tech for Teachers. Oh, last little thought from my classroom. We had a recruitment fair. That was the other thing that threw off my week. We had a recruitment fair for our tech school this week was a whole day and a half of letting students from our school and other schools tour through and ask questions about the programs, the tech school programs, vocational school programs, uh, and sign up or apply to join the various programs. There is an application they have to, to go through. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on us to get kids to sign up and, and join our programs because that's how a lot of our funding is based. Our funding is based on numbers we get. And I was, you know, thinking I wasn't going to have great numbers, uh, just based on the fact that on Monday I couldn't talk really. I was losing my voice, and I had some of my own, some of my current students kind of manning the, manning the recruitment, if you will. Uh, we actually had a great turnout. We had, we had, I've got more kids than I can accommodate next year, so that's great. That's a good thing. All right, now let's finish up this episode of the Practical EdTech Podcast with a little bit of Q&A, a handful of questions from readers, viewers, listeners like you, and my friend Beth. <laughs> so my friend Beth writes to me this week, and she says, I'm working on a publication for COSIN, and I want to use a Creative Commons licensed graphic when I clicked on the link for the licensing info, I got this. Any idea how to properly cite it in the text? Beth. So Beth and I went back and forth on this a little bit. Those of you who are watching the watching the video of this, I'm going to bring up what Beth is talking about right here. For those of you who are just listening, I'll explain. What happened here is Beth was taken to a page where the licensing applied to a whole package of media 
uh, not just the one image that she had, but the whole package. And so she was wondering, how do you cite the one item out of the out of this package of media? And I didn't really know, and she didn't really know either. And Beth is pretty smart. Uh, Beth and I have done webinars on copyright in the classroom. We've done webinars together, uh, co-taught webinars on copyright in the classroom. So she's no slouch on this topic. And we kind of went back and forth and kind of just determined that you you need to cite it and then you, know, you, you cite it as the organization, the, the, the licensing organization that has written it, and then call out that one individual item within it. That makes Hopefully that makes sense. So you cite the whole package as they asked and then call out the one item that's within that package. Philip asked me a question about screencasts and writing on PDFs. He writes, I'm trying to screencast by writing on a PDF. I have Camtasia for my Mac, but I want to be able to handwrite in multiple colors on a PDF while I record it. I had Formulate Pro for years and made tutorial math, tut tutorial math videos, but now that tool is dead and I'm stuck. I have a bamboo tablet to do the writing as well. Any help you can offer? Philip. My suggestion to Philip was to use Screencastify. Screencastify has recently unlocked a ton of features that previously you had to pay for. Uh, basically, the only thing you get to pay for now is if you want to record for longer than five minutes in a particular video. Uh, and actually, I have an I have old, col old colleague, old friend of mine, Christy, who has done this in the past. Uh, you can use it with Screencastify. Screencastomatic will work as well. Both have a lot of different colors you can use. You can just draw on the PDF while you're recording. It's a screencast over the PDF, and you can draw right on the right on the screen. So that's what I would do. You know, use Screencastify or Screencastomatic. Either one will work. Uh, Screencastify, I like their drawing tools a little bit better than what Screencastomatic offers, but not so much better that I would say one is significantly better than the other. Both good. Uh, Anthony sent me a question. How do you use MIT App Builder? And I think Anthony is referring to the MIT App Inventor. How to use it? Can't explain it in a, in one podcast, probably. So I'll say, go to the MIT App Inventor website. Go to the education section. They've got a ton of tutorials to help you get started using it. That's where I would start. Start with the education section on the MIT App Inventor website, and they will uh, that'd be your best place to get started. And follow the uh, follow these the first sample activity that's in there by default when you open up the MIT App Inventor, which is called Hello Purr, and you upload a picture of a cat, and then you then you pet the cat, and it purrs. So you learn how to upload a picture, upload an audio file, and then make a connection between the two. So I'd start with that. And last but not least, Scott asked me a question. He says, thanks for recording your webinar on Monday. Oh, by the way, that webinar is available on my YouTube channel. The recording is available on my YouTube channel. I like the framework and wondered if going through the discovery discussion and ending with demonstration could actually begin with demonstration as an incentive. Scott. Yes, it totally could, Scott. You could totally, you could really do the the framework of discovery discussion and demonstration in any order that you want the reason that i generally start with discovery is that when i was thinking of this framework i was thinking of it in in terms of working with people who are a little bit more apprehensive about using technology or a little more um, uh, yeah i guess apprehensive or you know, not quite convinced of the value, and so I, I tried to start with some quick, simple things like just some quick, handy little you know, Google search tricks, or little tricks you can do in your inbox to speed things up. Uh, you know, just doing some quick little things like that to kind of hook people in. That's not to say you couldn't hook people in with doing an awesome video or a podcast or some cool thing you make with uh, you know with an app designer you can do it any order you want that's just why I've done it the way I have now 
to truly wrap up the podcast today, a little bit from the shameless commerce division of my life, I will bring up the Practical Ed Tech Summer Camp. It is happening July 13th and 14th in Bethel, Maine. It is going to be more awesome than any year in the past, and it's been pretty awesome in the past. If you would like a discount code, go to practicaledtech.com and click on Practical Ed Tech Summer Camp. And there's a little form that you can fill out. It's just your first name, your email, and the button for get a discount code. And I'll send you a discount code. Awesome! Right? So that's cool. If you're looking for something a little, little more immediate, a little more immediate PD, all weekend this weekend, President's Day weekend, I'm putting, I've put all of my webinars on sale 50% off. So all my on-demand webinars 50% off for this weekend. Check it out. Go to PracticalEdTech.com. Click on the On Demand button. And you can get any and all of the webinars on that page for just $12.50 a piece. Have off. So, that's that. Thanks, as always, for joining me for this episode of the Practical Ed Tech Podcast. If you have questions for me, feel free to send me an email, richard at burn.media, or tweet at me. Twitter.com slash rmburn. Thanks, everyone. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.